Elucidating the Pathological Role of HOXA-5 as an Essential Metastatic Regulator, presented by Bria Liette, Grace Harmon, Nathan Hubbard, and Grace McIntyre. Head and neck squamous cell carcinoma, or HNSCC, is the sixth most common cancer worldwide. Over 550,000 new cases are diagnosed every year, but only f about 40 to 50 percent of these cases have a prognosis of five years of life. Homeobox Hox genes the class of genes that HOXA5 belongs to encode transcription factors that play an important role in regulating morphogenesis, cell differentiation, and cell growth. Because of the increase in head and neck squ squamous cell carcinomas worldwide and recent interest in the gene HOXA5, we will be investigating if HOXA5 is required and sufficient for an aggressive metastatic phenotype. To achieve this, we are specifically going to use Cal27, which is a cell line that is not only highly metastatic, but it is also highly expressed as the HOXA5 gene. To knock down Cal27 specifically, we are going to use shRNA. Thus, our hypothesis in, when we knock down the Cal27 is that it will decrease the invasion and migration abilities in in vitro head and neck squamous cell carcinoma. Specifically, it is talking about the ability to invade the membrane, ability of migration across a wound, and the ability of pro proliferation, which is technically just the ability to live. As you can see, there are three different assays shown in this specific AIMS box. The first assay shown is the basement membrane assay. We will be performing this to determine the percent of invasion. An additional assay that will be performed is the proliferation assay. The specific purpose of this is to find the number of cells which have an aggressive proliferation phenotype. And then the third assay will be the migration assay. This is specifically used to determine if HOXA5 is necessary for metastasis. As shown in the box, there are also two images, one which is labeled poorly metastatic head and neck squamous cell carcinoma line and the one below that which is highly metastatic. The top one will show, shows a scratch and the cells will invade this scratch, thus migrate, and because it's poorly metastatic, they will do this at a slower rate than the cells below it, as the cells below it are highly metastatic. To begin this process, we began by designing um, a plasmid containing the HOXA5 gene. If you look in the experimental progress box in the upper left-hand corner, you'll see the HOXA5 gene in green, and you'll also see the V5 tag, which is an important component of our plasmid, which we'll use later in our experiment in the western blot phase. We began by trying to determine that our plasmid um, works, so we began by introducing our HOXA5 plasmid into the 293T test cell line. After transfecting our cells, we wanted to determine that the transfection was successful. Using a control, which is an M H2B M cherry plasmid, um, we were able to determine that this transfection was likely successful. If you take a look at the image in the transfection box, you'll see the red dots, which indicates that each of those cells um, was able to successfully take up this plasmid. After the cells were able to take up the plasmid and express the HOXA5 gene, we wanted to extract that transcription factor. We did this through a protein lysis, and we were able to break down um, the cell and access the interior components of the cell, which we call the protein lysate. We did this through sonification. After we were able to isolate the protein, we completed a Bradford assay. The goal of this assay was to determine at what concentration our protein was being expressed in our transfected cells. After completing this, we were able to determine what that concentration was, and using that concentration, we were able to complete um, an SDS page, and we wanted to make sure that we had an equal concentration of our protein in each of our sample lanes. So after completing an SDS page, which was able to separate our proteins by mass, we were hoping to identify our HOXA5 gene in um, in its expression. We completed a western blot, and so we had a one control gene that we were hoping to stain for, um, and so that is GAP-DH shown here on the left, and the latter here is shown right next to it. There are two lanes that we were looking at. We were looking at um, our control lane, which looked at the M-Cherry, and we looked at our experimental line, which was the HOXA5. The, we were hoping to see bands at 37 kilodaltons in the GAP-DH one, but we weren't quite seeing that which indicates that we're not getting the correct band height in our GAP-DH control. 
we also completed the V5 tag one, which that V5 tag is located in our plasmid. We were hoping to see bands at the 35 kilodalton line on our ladder, but we weren't seeing those there. So this indicates that um, since we don't have the correct band lengths that there could be an issue with the protein lysate concentration, we might not have had enough protein. We might have completed the transformation step too long and we not have, have lost protein. Our antibodies could have been um, not effective and to address these conclusions, um, we're gonna move on to our next steps. Taking this into account, moving forward, we're going to focus more on achieving a higher concentration of protein lysate in our samples. And we will do this by essentially repeating the process all over again, starting with the transfection. We already have our plasma design, so we just need to transfect it into the 293T cells once again. After going through the process, we'll be able to hopefully get good results on a Western blot. And then once we're, we can do this process confidently and comfortably, we can then move on to designing an SHRNA to knock down HOXA5 in our experimental cell line, which is the Cal27 as we mentioned earlier. Designing this SHRNA will effectively knock down HOXA5 expression and hopefully we can begin to test our specific AIM-1 by performing the assays mentioned in the specific AIM section. We would like to thank Dr. Colleen Dochi, the Marin University College of Arts and Sciences, and Sigma Zeta for their support, mentorship, and funding for our project.